Hello, general chemistry students. This is Dr. Hayes. I want to explain the calculations behind lab number 17, where you're going to determine an equilibrium constant for this chemical reaction between iron and thiocyanates. When they react together, they make a beautiful orange-red uh, color, especially if you get the concentrations really high. We're going to use them in a really low concentration, so it's going to look a little orange. -ish. Here's the equilibrium constant. Put our products uh, divided by the reactants, multiplied together, everything's to the one power, since it's one to one to one. You're going to solve the, this equilibrium constant by thinking it through like an ice table. Remember, everything is in molarity when we see the brackets. This is what the product will look like after you mix some of the iron and thiocyanate. You'll see a nice little orange uh, red color. You'll do it in a test tube and then transfer it to cuvette. Cuvette will go into a spectrometer. You can measure the absorbance. The absorbance will then connect this over to the concentration of the product that we're looking for. So we just need to know something about the epsilon and the L, which is the path length. And we do. Path length's one, one centimeter. That's the uh, diameter of the, or the length of the cuvette that the light's going through. And then our molar absorptivity, this E, is known from previous experiments to be 5.03 times 10 to the third at 447 nanometers. That's going to be one of the peaks uh, that we're going to see. So if we go get the absorbance, we're actually going to do it in two places for our lab. Uh, we're going to, here's what the absorbance uh, may look like. And we're going to take a look at 447 nanometers and see what the absorbance is on the y-axis. In this example, it's 1.17. We're also going to do it at 680. This is going to be like a reference point in case something gets bumped or moves around. This is nice to have. It's going to be a low number and pretty much always be the same or similar on all your cuvettes. Um, but the 447 number will change. By subtracting the 1.17, minus the 0.04, it gives a correction, it gives us more accurate numbers, and uh, you get 1.13 here. Now plugging that into this equation over here, we can solve for the concentration of the product, because that's the thing that's red. We're measuring the red substance there, and I can solve for the concentration 2.24 times 10 to the minus 4. Now what is this that we just calculated? That's actually the equilibrium concentration of the product. How do I know it's the equilibrium? Concentration? Well, we didn't put any of it in, so that means we didn't have any initially. Anything that gets created is the product. On our ice table, you know, we set up your chemical reaction there, and we're going to have initial numbers that you're going to calculate from the concentrations given on the bottle, and then um, you'll be able, you got to do some dilution through that. We'll talk about it in a second. This reaction is going to proceed to the right. So we're going to minus, minus our two reactants and gain some products in the ratio of one to one to one. And then we can calculate the equilibrium concentrations if we knew what X is. And we do because we got that from the absorbance experiment. And so that's where we're going to say the concentration is equal to X that we found. So it's kind of nice. But you guys are going to have to calculate the actual concentrations uh, of your initial iron solution and thiocyanate using the M1, V1 equals M2, V2. And V1 is the amount of solution that you uh, measured out. And then V2 is the amount total. And I think it's going to be 10 mils in total. M1, V1, v M, M2, V2, the dilution equation, we use it all the time. Why? Because we're constantly mixing things. So you're going to have to use that. Like I said, we found what X is in this. And then we're going to now work from right to left, since we know X is, we can plug it in to these two expressions right here and find the equal, an actual equilibrium amount. So it's just subtraction now. So doing the subtraction, I've got 5.76 times 10 minus 4 and 7.76 times 10 minus 4 for my equilibrium concentrations of the two reactants. Now I have all the equilibrium concentrations. These are now going to get plugged into the equilibrium expression where we put the products divided by the reactants multiplied together. And when I do that, I get 501. Check my math. I think you'll see it's pretty good. Now, this is not an actual number you're going to get in the lab or the advanced study assignment. I sort of just made that up. Uh, but it, the process is exactly the same. So I hope you found that interesting and valuable as you do your calculations for the advanced study assignment and for the lab. Thanks for joining me. Have a good lab.